We are here at Cruise Saudi with Mashur Bayashan, the Destination Development Director. How are you? I'm good. How are you, Bell? It's great to have you here and great to be here at Sea Trade once again. And cruising is on an upward uh, trajectory. Things are going great, and the attendance here is amazing. Yes, we're excited to be here. This is our third year. Now, uh, second year we have a booth in, in Sea Trade. So we're excited for it. This is more than just a booth. This is very impressive. We are Cruise Saudi, we represent the country and we have different destinations coming along with us. We have Neom, we have the uh, Jeddah destination which is on Isca side. That's why it's a bigger booth to pre represent the country, not only the cruising. Very nice. Cruise Saudi has constantly driven the development of destination experiences to a thriving sector. What specific steps have been taken to achieve this goal? So we started in 2020 when the COVID hit with a pilot season to try out the market to build the industry in Saudi Arabia and then we opened the ports for international markets. We got our sailing from MSC for a season. It was our first season. This year we have four different brands. Next year we have 13 and we're going into 19 different brands. We started with one coast and we're moving with it. This year we opened the other coast which is the Gulf the Man port. Impressive. What can you tell us about the vision of Cruise Saudi for 2023 and the upcoming year? So as I was just saying, we have uh, 19 brands coming to, to Saudi Arabia. We have different across the board from uh, mainstream to ultra luxury cruise lines. We've, uh, our ports give you access to different destinations, different cities. So if you dock in our home port, which is Jeddah, gives you access to Jeddah as a city, but gives you to Mecca, which is the holy city. Uh, you can go to Medina by train, you can fly to Alula, and it gives you an immersive experience in culture, nature, and also water activities. For anyone looking to cruise out of Saudi, what should, why should they sail out of these ports? What is, what is the value proposition for someone? Sure. Uh, in Saudi, we have six UNESCO sites. Our ports gives you access to three UNESCO sites. So Jeddah gives you access to Al-Balad or Alula. And uh, if you go to our other coast, the Gulf, if you go to the Mam, it gives you access to al uh, Oasis. We opened this port this year. Um, uh, and you can do pre and post to visit the other wow. uh, three um, uh, UNESCO sites, other than the nature destinations that we have. Where can guests find these ports when researching Saudi? So the first step is to, or the first destination to go to is cruisesaudi.com. Our website have access to all the ports and information about it. But the other thing is the cruise lines that come to Saudi, you will see the ports and you will see the experiences that they are offering. There are so many vibrant cities and traditional spots in Saudi. To someone visiting for the first time, what would you recommend exploring first? So I would say everyone, because I'm biased, I'm Saudi, but mm -hmm. I am from Jeddah, I'm biased to Jeddah. It has an ISCO site, and again, you have the access to the beach, and you have access to the water for snorkeling and diving. However, according to your flavor, if you want something more on the Gulf, you can go to the MAM, which has uh, a Gulf experience, Dubai, the MAM, and the MAM. It gives you experience of rich nature and culture. Saudi is known as the voyage of discovery. Why do many consider this place so the country wasn't open for tourism officially. We opened up in 2019 and then right. COVID hit, something slowed down and then we opened again. We were open since then, but with COVID things slowed down. So it's a lot of people didn't visit Saudi. So it's in um, the bucket list of a lot of people. So, and there is a lot to offer. The area of Saudi Arabia is almost 20% of the area of Europe. So you right. can imagine how big the country is and what to offer over there. We have a coastline of 17, 60 kilometers. So it's rich in nature, rich in offering, rich in culture as well. The immersive experiences Saudi has to offer are truly, truly one of a kind. From dining to beautiful landscapes, what is your favorite touch point? Uh, the personal human touch point. So we, in, in, in the Arabic language, we have a word we call it hafawa. Hafawa is the extra mile after the hospitality. And this is what we train all the frontliners in our hospitality when they meet our guests, the tour guides, the bus driver, the frontliners sure. and all the tourism. The vision of Cruise Saudi is to drive the development of destination experiences to build a cruise sector in uh, Saudi. How will you continue this mission in years to come? So we have a blessing and a challenge. We're a new destination. We're new to tourism. Right. So we're building things from scratch. We have the culture. We have the nature that we need to preserve. But we're building a foundation from scratch. We're building it with innovation and sustainability in mind. So it gives us an edge that we can build for the future with preserving all the culture and nature we have. The main focus of Cruise Saudi is innovation and sustainability, as you mentioned. Why are these initiatives a key factor in your company's mission statement? Because this is the direction for the future. Sustainability, of course, we, we've been closed and we preserved our destination. I want to make sure when we open it for tourism, we maintain the same level of sustainability we have. Uh, and for innovation, innovation is like a cutting edge that you can offer to any guest. 
It's a pleasure interviewing you, and I look forward to sailing out of uh, Saudi in the very near future. And for those of you who have never considered doing so, please do so. It's a part of the world that's undiscovered, and uh, cruising in Saudi is the new frontier. Thank you so much. I'm Bill Panna for Porthole Cruise and Travel.